NIDA, National Institute of Drug Abuse, indicates today that 50% or more of the reason that you have mood problems or you have substance abuse problems is because of genetics. People say, well, if I'm an alcoholic or an addict, that means that my kids could, could be one too. Well, you're right, 50 per, probably 50%, you know, or more. Typically, depends upon how bad things are, right? So what do you do? You have to educate your kids. You have to tell them, talk to them, let them know the consequences, right? That's education, right? Now, at times what will happen is that this egg will split prematurely so that you have two of these, and they'll go down here, and then you got, you got double trouble here. You got two kids, you know, that are alcoholics uh, or addicts. You know, it happened. And actually what they've done in the past in Sweden and Switzerland, they actually took these kids and they, they actually uh, separated the kids and they put them into environments, different environments. They went, how much is environmental? Environmental is, if I start screaming at you guys, spitting, I'm throwing chairs at you, that's environmental, right? Those are stressors. And then how much, how you react to that is genetic, okay? So they looked at this and they put some in a very nice religious home and all this other stuff and other ones they put into a house, you know, or a home where there's, you know, like I grew up in both those environments. I grew up in, in uh, you know, Orem, Utah as a kid, went to the Mormon church there. And then I grew up in Jackass Flats, Nevada, which there was just bars and houses of prostitution and all that, right? And so there's different environments in the United States. So they want to see, hey, what's the chance these kids turning into alcoholics and addicts, right? Well, guess what? It was roughly the same. All you got to do is take the genetic person that is prone to have the genes and then suddenly what happens is if you introduce them to that drug or alcohol of choice, then they're going to suddenly become an addict or an alcoholic. You see what I mean? Just take yourself. The first time that you took a drink, you said, that's my drug of choice. Or marijuana or, or you know, opiates or the Oxycontin. See what I mean? You knew that that was it, right? It was all kind of a setup. So they, they, they looked at that. Uh, they actually separated these kids. And they found out, you know, how, what's the percentage of, of chance of that happening. They also looked at genes, genetics, like this. They looked at genetics, and they, when they looked at the genetics, they, we know that the DNA has adazine, guanine, thiamine, uh, cytos, I mean, guanine here, cytosine, you know, and they, there's a code here. And we realize now, we think we, that addiction is that you didn't get the genes for something. It's not that you got a gene for alcoholism, it's something you didn't get. See what I mean? And so you didn't get something that, that you crave. And that's, that's what we're considering at this point in time. Okay? So, so if we look at the genes here on the 13th chromosome, 2000 down, on the upper part here, right here, we know that if you get uh, that set that's wrong, it's got a mutation in it and so forth, probably not a perfect set, then you're opiate dependent. You're opiate dependent from one parent to the next. See what I mean? We looked at that. National Institute of Drug Abuse, so is that it. Now we look at the second chromosome down here at 2Q35, they call it, that that's associated with alcoholism. So there's about 127 sets of genes there on the, on the second that goes from one alcoholic family to the next, right? Now we can also look at this thing and we can, uh, there is some testing now going on for bipolar to see if their bipolar is inherited or Alzheimer's disorder, see, or other depressions. So we're actually fast, uh, fast and, and, uh, and with research, we, you know, we are looking at all these different chromosomal sets and trying to make diagnosis on people, right? In the future, what we could see is people actually drawing, drawing your blood, you know, running a swab up your schnoz, you know, looking for some mucus and looking at DNA, and then running a, you know, a three-hour test on it, have you come back in the afternoon and say, hey, you know, you have these genetic abnormalities, which is doing something against your neurotransmitter system, okay? So we're talking about some type of abnormalities in the genetic system. So that's why we're saying that you have what? a what? A, an imbalance, a chemical imbalance. So when we talk about chemical imbalance, we're talking about neurochemical imbalance. And neurochemical imbalance, we're talking about neurotransmitter imbalance. Neurotransmitter imbalance 
meaning that your neurotransmitters are off and different than the normal population.